Welcome everyone to Revelations from the Courtroom of Heaven. And we're rolling, aren't we? We're rolling on here. And uh, this episode, it's called Remaining Qualified as a Priest. So we know we are a royal priesthood. We know that we have spiritual offices. And we know the whole aspect of becoming justified and how we do that within the courts. And that's good. That's useful. We need that. But this, where I'm taking this, is remaining qualified. It's in your everyday life and in your heart. Are you remaining qualified as a priest? And so I'm not going to go into the scripture into depth, but I will use a verse here. But I will tell you that you should read Zechariah 3 and the surrounding chapters. This scripture is all about the spiritual courtroom and what takes place the enemy's there, angels are, are there, attendants are there, the Lord is there, the judge of all, God is there. So you want to kind of really allow the Holy Spirit to take you into that scripture to show you the depth of how real this is. But one verse here is Zechariah 3, verse 7. So, so he's talking to Joshua, the high priest in Israel. This is Old Testament times, but God takes Joshua into the, into the spirit realm and ministers to him and brings him out into a place of righteousness. But we just want to look at this verse today. This is Zechariah 3, 7. This is what the Lord of hosts says to Joshua. If you walk in my ways and keep my instructions, then you will govern my house and you will also have charge of my courts. And I will give you a place among these who are standing here. So in this spiritual court setting... There are many places for God's people. There are many that already have places. I will give you a place among these who are standing here. And don't we know that the New Testament, what Jesus did for us, is so good because these figures that we look to in the Old Testament, these high priests in these positions of honor, God desires to bring us as the royal priesthood. Did he stutter? He called us a royal priesthood. A place of honor is given to us. The word says that we are kings and priests to our God. So all these great things, um, that you know, these great positions that God has for his people is for now more than ever. And they are more various than they ever will be because we're in the New Testament. They're greater things. So God wants to give you a place in the courts. And there's a way to walk through the justification system. But what we're talking about is the responsibility of the heart. Now check this out. So we were talking about the Old Testament scene. God was dealing with his high priest. Well, God wants to deal with his priest in you and in me in this way. John 22, starting at verse 21. So this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Again, Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so also I am sending you. He's commissioning his people. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now look, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. So what should we take of that? It, isn't God the only one that can forgive sins? Isn't, isn't that an amazing statement? But Jesus is saying, wait, wait, receive my Holy Spirit and you, my disciples, my church, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Responsibility. Going back to that verse we were talking about, God was giving Joshua the responsibility to govern his house and have charge over his courts. So God gives you souls to have charge of. And there's a special way that you know, we get with God when we're praying and representing people for, within the court system. There is that. But this is also talking about how, you know, how are you living your life? Are you going to hold on to what that person did to you? Or are you going to free them? Because you, priest, you actually have the authority to do that. Do you want to withhold that forgiveness? Or do you want them to be clean and cleared? So how far are you going to go with somebody? Okay, so we are representatives in the New Testament, this royal priesthood. We are representatives of God and ambassadors for heaven. We have sway. 
what we say matters. But so we're going to see that, yes, what we say matters. But if we're saying and doing the wrong things, we're going to disqualify ourselves and then no longer be able to be the priest. We could lose our position by not doing things a lot properly. And what does properly mean? So priests are those who appeal to God on behalf of his heart in every matter. Remember, God said to Joshua, if you walk in my ways and keep my instructions. So when we're walking in God's ways, he's a part of us. We know him. He knows us. He can start to trust us because he sees that we are not dissimilar to him. We're, we're like him walking how we need to. And then, so a person like that, he's going to give a, he's going to promote. He's going to give a position. He's going to give authority. And he's going to entrust souls. And do you know that sometimes, you know, so a person can be so bound that they can't properly re repent. Like they can't properly see the misery of their situation. Their heart is so hard. So God needs someone with a softened heart to stand in the gap and to cry those tears that that person can't cry. God's crying the tears. You know, God sees it. God shares that burden. He sees this person that's so bound up, so pent up. He wants to share that burden with you and, you know, allow you to, you know, God, you need to forgive these people. Lord, they really don't know what they're doing. Isn't that what Jesus did on the cross? Jesus, the mediator, the ultimate high priest, did just that on the cross. So we have that, and we, so we see, you know, Jesus was hurt over and over again. Jesus got wounded, got betrayed over and over again, but he kept forgiving those who were doing him the most wrong. That's who he was forgiving. Are we doing that? And so the word of God tells us that God is, God is the one who judges the earth. We can see that in Psalm 58, 11. We can see that in Psalm 94, 2. In Colossians 1, 20, it speaks this of Jesus that it was up to him. God gave Jesus this right or this um, duty to reconcile to God all things through Jesus, whether things on earth or things by heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. By making peace. So the many complex situations of life, how we deal with people, if we choose to represent people before God, are we choosing that peace? Are we choosing to lean on God to reconcile that situation so that all the bitterness, the hatred, all these things are removed and peace can come? Because peace, you know, peace is the opposite of that conflict. And the supernatural peace of God can move through a priest and someone who he has positioned to carry all of heaven, to carry all of him. But one thing, one way to hold things up in the courts is to withhold that peace. And, and how do we do that? If we're being judgmental, this can disqualify us. James 2.13 tells us that mercy triumphs over judgment. And we can see the heart of God is all about desiring mercy. So God desires to bring about his justice. And that justice will include the mercy that God wants to do. But if you read the word, especially the Old Testament, if people aren't using the mercy of God, if they're not, you know, asking God for that mercy, if they're not repenting, if they're not repenting for other people, that mercy is being wasted. That mercy that God wants to release can't be released because we need to ask for it by repenting, by saying, God, I'm sorry about the situation. You know, the, the priest reconciles that situation. If there is no man to, you know, for God to entrust with that, so many things aren't getting resolved because heaven can't get through. Because that man is not heavenly, that man is not walking in the spirit, and God can't move. So that's people within their own ways, in their own judgments, living, dealing with situations, trying to resolve situations in our own hands. See, you know, all these things are wrong. Why? Matthew 7, verse 2. For the judgment you pronounce, this is Jesus talking, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. So God is the judge. God can entrust you with his judgments. God can entrust you with his heart. But that priest is not judging on his own accord. He has the ways of God in him. God can trust him. And, when he, and he knows when to go to God, when to bring God's judgments down. 
And so here's the heart of a priest, Micah 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And will God test us in this? Well, of course he will. Of course he will. He needs to know that he can trust his priests to not pronounce their own judgments. So pronouncing our own judgments, what are we really doing? Who are we reflecting when we're being judgmental? When we have a critical or accusing spirit upon us. Well, what does the Bible call Satan? The accuser of the brethren. Are we accusing the brethren? Or are we, you know, taking things to God? When people hurt us, God, I feel this. I know I shouldn't, but here's all my real emotions. Here's all my real feelings. Now, please, I don't want to judge this person. I want you to help me. And God, I want mercy to come to pass in this person's life. I want you to bless them. See, this is how a priest is to massage the heart of God so heaven can invade. Because heaven wants to invade many hard situations. And maybe that person will stop vexing you if they get the revelation of God in their life, if they get mercy in their life. You know, maybe that, maybe, may, maybe not, but that doesn't matter to you really. It's what God requires. It's the part of carrying the mantle. It's the part of carrying that role of being a priest. I'm going to allow God to reconcile things through me. I'm going to do what I can and then move on. Because really, and God is, he's reaching out through you. And he's also, he may know that, you know, that person is not going to change. But in my goodness, God says, in my goodness, I'm going to give them a chance. And I'm going to use you as my vessel to give them that chance. Because they're not going to stand before me on judgment day and accuse me the almighty God of being unloving or unmerciful or unkind. I tried, I tried. And so in that vein, God will ultimately judge all, you know, for all things. So if he has a priest and he means for you to walk humbly, to love mercy, and you're someone that's not doing that, you will be held accountable for that soul that you would not let God reach through you. So how about that? A lot of responsibility in being the priest. And so the whole system of judgment, the whole system of condemnation, that is one that Jesus took away from us on the cross. So God may look and say, why are you even dealing in that? Why are you even letting that in your heart to want to condemn that person? I know it may be hard. I know it, it's hard maybe, you know, but let's work this thing out together. State your case before me and I'll fix you and then I'll bring things to pass because remember, Judgment belongs to God. Vengeance is God's payback. And God will pay back people for coming against you. You're his beloved. You are representing him. You are representing his purpose. So don't we have peace that we don't need to hold on to condemnation, but we can let people go knowing that God will pay back. We don't, we're, we're not waiting on him to do so, but it's the justice of God. Now the enemy wants you to take that back from God, his right to bring about justice and judgment and vengeance. The enemy wants you to do that. So then you mess up the situation because maybe the justice of God will bring that person to repent. But you'll just mess up a situation. You'll mess up yourself. And who knows the collateral damage of everyone else that you're going to mess up by bringing your own judgments. The judgments of God are perfect. And, you know, more, you know, I'm, I've, I've been with God for, you know, five or six years, but that is so true. I see how he works things out. And I'm, I'm sure I'm, you know, I'll, I'll see it much more in the days ahead as I continue to grow. But he is behind the scenes working all things out. And all the stuff I got preoccupied with, falling into judging other people, getting in that cycle, and then what happens? So I'm judging someone, and so they're receiving bad stuff. They're maybe judging me or coming against me. So that cycle just keeps going. You know, someone needs to break that cycle. So condemnation belongs to the enemy. We don't want to put it on other people. God will bring justice and judgment however he sees fit, and he'll take care of everything. But we want to be free from the judgment, from the condemnation, blank slate. That's righteousness. That's why Jesus was blameless. And in him, we are the righteousness you know, of God in Christ Jesus. We are blameless. And this is it. Romans 13, verse 8. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another, for he that loveth has fulfilled the law. 
So you're good with God. You love. You do what God says to you. You keep his ways, you know, and you're good. And so that's about, that's how we are priests. We lean to God for everything. We maneuver through life with him. And we don't hold on to judgments because they disqualify us from having any place in the courts. You know, that, that black spot of judgment belongs in hell. That condemnation belongs in hell. And you're accusing, and you, so you're guilty, and you're playing the devil's game, not the game that, you know, God wants to play, which is a game of justice, blamelessness, mercy, peace, all those things, okay? So I hope I made things clear, a very practical understanding of what it, what's required of a priest. We dealt a little bit, but a little bit with the courts, but really I hope that, that uh, you can search your hearts Remember, there's a court in heaven called the court of contrition to where God will make the matters of the heart known to you. Why? You wait in his presence in this place. You let him bring things up. Sometimes it needs to, you know, get going a little bit, a little bit of percolation. You know, there needs to be a little bit of drainage going on in order for God to show you what's really going on in your heart. And for some of you, if there's a situation that judgments have followed you all your life and you just can't shake it, you can go into the court of influence. God opens his court as he sees fit. Seek him. He wants to remove the long-standing judgments that the enemy has over you. So there's your little core piece to go along with the teaching. Thanks for joining me. All the love, all the mercy, all the peace to you and yours.